Many organometallic reactions, like the Grignard reaction, requires anhydrous conditions, that is the total exclusion of water. To build such an apparatus, what we do is start with the reaction flask, and then we're going to add the glazing condenser to allow addition of both a reflux condenser and then an addition funnel so that we can add reagents during the reaction without taking it apart and introducing water. We also want to keep the atmospheric water from the air um, out of the reaction by using a drying tube. So a drying tube is prepared by adding a piece of glass wool, some calcium chloride drying reagent, and some more glass wool on top. So our equipment in the laboratory has one drying tube, which I'll place here, and then we have a makeshift drying tube made from our vacuum adapter that again has the glass wool, calcium chloride, and some more glass wool. And we're just gonna add a rubber um, bulb on the end to keep that sealed. So now we have the assembled apparatus. Notice that I do not have water running in the apparatus yet because we want to dry all the glassware. There's a surprising amount of water on the glassware even though you cannot see it. In research labs, what is done is to place all the glassware in an oven and dry it overnight. In teaching laboratories, what we're going to do is use a flame to chase the vapors out of the apparatus and dry it. Make sure there's no solvents around before you ignite the flame and this should be performed in the hood. To light the Bunsen burner, turn on the gas. Light a match and you always bring it in through the side to get a good flame. You want to adjust both the air and the gas so that we have a hot blue cone that's visible. All right. Now to chase the vapors, the water vapors out of the apparatus, which is sealed except for um, the open ends that are protected using the calcium chloride drying tubes. You wanna start at the very bottom. And there you can see the vapors. There was lots of water on this glassware. And I'm gonna work to push those vapors all the way up through the apparatus and out through the top. So you have to go all the way around. Make sure you don't catch anything on fire, like the three-prong clamp. Gonna go up the clays in. Back on the other side of the clays in. You'll notice that I've applied light grease to all of my joints. That will help keep water out. I can see that my separatory funnel stopcock was closed, so I'm gonna open that so that I can chase the vapors out. But again, be very careful not to melt the stopcock to the addition funnel. This takes patience and persistence as we move up the apparatus. And I just lost my flame, so I'm going to need to light it again. All right, where was I? Back up here. Now you wanna to go to the top again, don't catch your rubber ball on fire. And you don't want to flame dry the calcium chloride. You just wanna to go to the top of the glassware. 
Now I'm going to go up through the condenser and, and realistically we're not going to get the inside of the condenser, but it's still worthwhile to heat to the top. All right, that's the first pass. Now I'm going to start at the bottom again and see how I did. And there you can see that there's not much vapor left. Got most of it. I'm going to check all the way up the top again. Looks like most of the water has been removed. Air may be returning back to the apparatus but it's passing through those calcium chloride drying tubes to keep it nice and dry. All right, that looks pretty good. We now have a nice dry apparatus. You want to let it cool totally before taking it back to your bench from the hood and before adding any reagents.